Welcome everyone to this week's IPLD Sync and Community Meeting. It's November the 7th, 2022. And as every two weeks, uh, we go over the stuff that people have worked on and then discuss any open agenda items. Um, this week, I actually have some updates which are not all from myself, but um, still interesting. So the past two weeks, there was like big protocol labs and IPFS and Filecoin things happening in Lisbon and plenty of time to discuss things. And so I spent lots of time discussing um, CID version two. So there is an IPIP, an IPFS proposal um, on which is about CID version two. Um, and interesting was that, so I was meeting with the person that created this proposal and the first sentence they said were, oh, I don't think it's a good idea anymore. Um, so then I spent, yeah, the two weeks discussing things. I've counted the hours. It was about like 10 to 12 hours really discussing with people. And the outcomes are several proposals. And I have the HackMD linked, which contains some notes. Um, currently, um, the most promising one, which seems to solve all the cases I'm aware of, is so the short version is we will not do a CID version two, but we will do something else instead called, so I named it application context, but if anyone has a good name, uh, it would be very welcome because we couldn't, have, can, couldn't come up with a good name. And what you do is you get a new multi-codec and you say then this is the context and it, and it links to some structured data, probably an IPLD object, which contains any data you like. Probably there will be some description on what you usually put there. So there's, yeah, emergence and people kind of like have the same structure, but generally it's whatever you like. And then afterwards you have the CAD. And then, so you basically request the CAD and then you apply the context and it can do whatever you like. Uh, use cases, for example, are for the IPVM where they want to do some web assembly stuff that in its context, they describe, for example, the interface of your assembly program, uh, of your web assembly program. Or what where I came from is when I talked to the Lurk people, um, they need some additional information on what the field elements they link to, which are content addressed, what they actually mean. Um, so this is a current idea. Um, I plan to write this like out in a proper proposal and so on, but um, that's the rough idea. And what like during the discussions, like why I think it's a great idea that it's not a CAD version two is because it means that it won't be serialized in your data. So if you would do a CAD version two, suddenly you could put something other thing into the CAD in your IPLD into the data model and suddenly things are kind of different. And with this proposal, it's not a new CAD, but it's something different. And the idea would then be if you were to put it, and so we also identified two cases, like the dynamic case, where, for example, like request something from some node, you just pass in this context and this other thing. It's a dynamic case. And a static case is you really want to have it in your IPLD. So let's say you have some data structure and then want to link something with some fixed context. Yeah, well, you would just put in there the two hashes, like one hash with the context and the CD and your application would need to understand that this is the context that I apply to it and so on. So that's currently the rough idea. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm pretty happy about the outcome. And yeah, so in this HackMD that I posted is also like different ways how we thought about it and yeah, many different ideas. And the last thing I want to mention in this regard is um, for the Lurk project, we need, um, there's a need for um, more parameterized hash functions, which we already have in the multi-codec table, which is super ugly. I think almost everyone agrees that it's hard to scale and having for all kind of parameters your own entry. Um, and yeah, but it's also like part in the document. I don't go too deep into it because I will probably then talk about it once I have a proposal and then I will talk about more details here again. Um, then other news from the ecosystem, which is like not related to me, but there 
used to be a Rust IPFS implementation called Rust IPFS, which was sponsored by Proto Labs. This one is now long, now no longer maintained. Um, it's archived, um, and there won't be no further development. Um, alternatives, like I would say, the current most promising one is Iro, um, which also got has its first release um, published during uh, IPFS camp last week or the week before. And the other implementation is IPFS Embed, which doesn't really strive for full compatibility, but it's just like an, I think, interesting project and also like worth checking out. There was also a talk at the IPFS camp um, about IPFS Embed. And if anyone is interested, the videos should be up soon or, or are already up. I don't know. Um, yeah. All right. And um, that's all I have. The next one is Eric. Hello. So I have uh, some stories I want to share that are just IPLV in the wild stuff, not really core developments in IPLV land. It's just like stuff I'm learning as I try to use the beast. So I had a project unveil at the IPFS camp this last week also, and there is a recording of Warpforge uh, and also how we do a bunch of things inside of it. And it's some of the stuff in the middle that's really IPLV focused. So there's a link to the YouTube thing in our uh, meeting notes. And in particular for the IPLV audience, I wanna draw attention to the middle, starting at about 15 minutes in and going for quite a while. Um, basically every place where the background slide color is white. There is a section that's talking about this data structure called catalogs in Warforge. And spoiler, they're just a huge, huge IPLV data structure. Uh, and it is how we are attempting to solve a distributed naming problem and package versioning and just sharing metadata problem with a bunch of applied IPLB. So I think that's kind of cool. And it should be a fun example of like how to build real applications using IPLB. It also puts uh, some ADLs to work, or at least I hope it will in the future. Uh, I want to use Prolly trees. I hope that uh, we get an implementation of those we can plug in soon. Um, but the design is prepared for it anyway. Um, yeah, lots and lots of IPLB in the wild there. Um, I also dropped uh, one more link in the meeting notes, which is to the source repo for that project, where we have a big IPLB scheme file with, I don't know how many types, hundreds? It's a pretty, it's a pretty big schema. It does a lot of work, um, including for the catalog thing, but then also all sorts of other structures that are like quasi linked to it. Um, it's, it's a fun example. So that's one of the two things I wanted to share briefly. Um, the other one is I have a bit of an experience report that I want to log of um, trying to use uh, Starlark, which is a Python dialect, uh, and the data lark library, and IPLV schemas in order to generate some of the data that we use um, to drive the Warpforge project around. So uh, slightly more context for that. There's some parts of Warpforge which like basically execute other declarative data files. Um, and we want some templating language to like crank these things out in large volumes with like partially repetitive structures, but you know, with, with variations with them as well. Um, so we're researching how to do that most ergonomically. So we tried to use uh, the data lark library in the Starlark language to generate this data and also have types from the IPLV schemas on the fly as we're doing. It's turning out a little bumpier than I had hoped. So the main thing that we've discovered so far is uh, we very frequently in this particular user story want to generate like, partial fragments of data. Like we're kind of solving a sort of a templating problem in our and then like the, the application we're developing requires us to crank these things out in a way that feels like filling in templates. And the trouble here is that then applying types and strictness too early actually doesn't help. Um, and I think there's some kind of a gradient here. Like sometimes it does help. Sometimes you want to do a type check. Like, is this string actually matching this whole set of unions? Does this thing parse? Doing that early and providing an error quickly if it doesn't can be nice. Uh, on the other hand, we end up with this story where we try to build like a hunk of a document, but we want to like fill in this part and not this part yet, and fill in this part, and then 
if I try to apply types on that, then it reasonably rejects it because it's missing one of the required fields in the middle. But this isn't helping me in my user story of like templating data. So we're ending up with this, this awkward situation where we would either write a bunch more types that have optional fields, that feels bad, or like write some partial types that have like half of the fields in them. That would be technically correct, but like feels very boilerplate and heavyweight. Or we could write a bunch of data that's totally untyped and apply types at the end. And I think that's where we're going to end up continuing to try to work. And hopefully the data lark libraries are actually going to let us do this smoothly. There's probably going to be a follow-up experience report on this uh, in the future. Um, we're just trying stuff out. But I thought that was um, this desire for partial incremental typing is interesting. Experience report complete. That's all I've got. Thank you. Um... Next on my list is Musim. Hey everyone, it's been a while since I've attended one of these. Just wanted to say hi and also report that I have reworked some of the immense stuff that I was working on uh, the last few months. It is now implemented in basic node instead of being part of traversal or parallel traversal. Um, I think it does the job and it works, but definitely would appreciate reviews and um, and go from there. Uh, part of it is not quite in trying to implement the equivalent of traversal from within basic node that feels a little hacky and ugly, but uh, um, whenever someone gets a chance to look, please take a look and let me know. Um, that was it for me. Thanks. Next one is Will. Uh, sure. I've just got a, a small one. Um, there's a PR to the GoCar CLI that adds a pair of subcommands um, that I named debug and compile. Uh, debug will take a car and dump it into a patch file-like uh, syntax, uh, and will put each block uh, in a DAG JSON pretty printed um, format so that it's largely human interpretable. Things that are just bytes, if they are ASCII printable, will just be raw. Um, so you'll get like the contents of the file just directly there. And then in the patch header, it'll say if it's JSON or raw. And then compile will undo that and put it back in a car file. Uh, and one of the neat things is it does do some find replace. So it will relink the SIDs. So if you modify some SID, it'll see what points to the previous SID from the header. It will recompile to figure out what the new SID is and it'll change the links of the parents to um, relink them to where they should be. So it makes it relatively easy to go in and modify some piece of a DAG um, and then get a new still linked car. Um, so that's, that's hopefully a little bit easier than the manual twiddling of bits or bytes. That's it. Cool. That's really exciting. Um, so next one is Mo. Oh, actually, before that, could I ask a question about the car thing? <clears throat> um, so have you considered doing like patches, like JSON or IPLD patch patches to um, like surface changes in data sets? Not, I have not considered very much at all. I, I, I did the plus, plus, plus and the minus, minus, minus so that I could run it through like the diff commands I had and get nice colors and stuff. Mm. Um, because they're good at doing that. Um, I am not overly committed to any format, though. Interesting. Just pointing it out as that might be something just interesting to have um, focused more in the community so we can be like, hey, here's like the way to diff IPLD in a way that you can send it down the wire or whatever. So, so the yeah. interesting thing here is this doesn't actually do any diffs. It, it, mm. it prints it in a like hunk format in the same, like here is a file that we're going to call the SID. Mm -hmm. And both the plus and the minus side is named the SID because the SID hasn't changed necessarily. And then we do the little at signs to say how long it is. And then we just print the file. So we're not putting like, we're not comparing two things. It's just, this is what the car is and nothing's mm -hmm. changed in the diff. So we're printing it in a diff view that all the diff renderers are happy about being able to scroll through the different sub hunks <laughs> of it. But we okay. haven't changed anything. There's one version. 
Okay, cool. I think I misunderstood. Thank you. So that's really just for like editor support. Eric okay. seems to be unhappy about this choice. Nope, I am entertained. <laughs> Not sure if good or bad, but definitely entertained. <laughs> Cool. Okay. I guess now I can talk about my updates. <laughs> so um, last week was the end of lab week 2022. Um, and the week before that was the start and also the week I attended. And there was a lot of talk about IPLD stuff. Um, I did a couple of talks on what IPLD is, which I aim to have like a high level intro to all of the pieces that are relevant and specifically trying to make it accessible to people that are new to IPLD that might know a little bit of um, the IPFS ecosystem. And so far, it seems like there's folks that have been like enjoying that approach. <clears throat> um, had a lot of talks about folks that are now more interested in using IPLD. I think there's a lot of talks about IPLD databases. Um, Eric mentioned before um, excitement about proly trees. I'm also very excited about proly trees, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a bunch of other teams excited about proly trees. Um, and so the spec for that is actually nearing a state where we're going to PR it to the main IPLD repo. So we've just generated some fixtures. We have most of our spec text uh, written out, and that's a uh, huge thanks to um, Julius from, I guess, representing herself and also Ken, the Ken Labs team from, I think, mostly China and Europe on doing all the heavy lifting on implementing all of that. But we're hoping to have that submitted as a PR sometime soon, and we'll be really excited to get reviews. Um, there is an Im initial implementation that is almost ready in Golang. And we'll probably be looking at uh, doing a dev grant for a Rust implementation soonish. Um, outside of that, um, during Lisbon, we had some IPLD team road mapping talks where, uh, to be honest, the past year or so, the IPLD team hasn't really existed much. Um, but that might change. And part of that is going to be having an actual roadmap of what we're going to be working on developed. We're probably going to be hiring up to um, increase our capacity in the team. And also we're going to be starting up a working group where which will put together stakeholders from a bunch of protocol labs related teams that may be building on top of IPLD. And part of the goal it, there is to like find out where there's common needs and try to get those needs met. So we're still kind of figuring out what this will be, but this is kind of like a bit of an info dump of the conversation I had uh, during the event. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Probably within the next two weeks, we'll have more interesting things. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> cool, yeah. Um, I forgot to mention that there was also a meeting about the IPLD documentation. Um, so we had a run through from uh, Julia from Protocol Labs who did kind of like the UX side of things and proposed like how to restructure things. And then we had, so in the meeting were also people from the Protocol Labs docs team. And so the plan is now that basically there's a plan on how to, we could restructure the documentation. And then we move it over to their platform, um, which is also a markdown base. So it should really be again, just like just <laughs> moving files. Um, and so their platform also super supports re re redirects. So we make sure that for example, like links to let's say that DEX CBOR spec, which is heavily used, will redirect to the new thing if the URL changes. And um, the new system or like what they use is Hugo based, but yeah, it's an implementation detail. But you then will also get search, for example, on the documentation and stuff like this. And potentially also like people could uh, translate this stuff and basically, so we kind of like hand it over to the docs team, which is kind of nice um, that they kind of like take care of it. 
And so the agreement was that um, so they don't really put effort into like improving the documentation. No, but the first step is really only like restructuring it to a way where basically Rod and Julia have worked on, which makes sense, and they do the kind of like the initial import, and then we go from there. And I also volunteer to basically review PRs or something, and yeah, stuff like this, and then we can go from there. Um, and but it won't happen soon, so it's like really like the next few weeks it will happen eventually because they're just busy with other projects. But I also don't think like it's super urgent, but it will happen. Um, yeah, and then they will look pretty slick afterwards. All I right. think if I may add to that real quick. Yeah. Um, also during the road mapping sessions, um, it got brought up that just outside of the look and feel of the docs, it might be useful to add some new docs that are a little bit more beginner friendly <laughs> or have like a more gentle on ramp to the more details oriented content that's already on there. So that might also be part of these discussions, but also it doesn't seem like it's super high priority and it's probably something that will need to budget and roadmap as part of the IPLD team in general. Yeah, um, there is also like already like uh, Rod mentioned that he wrote already docs for the Launchpad program, which are not part of the IPLD documentation, but they will be moved over then into the products. So yeah, all right, cool. Um, all right, um, cool. Um, anything else um, people want to talk about or? Want information about from when we met in person, or I don't know anything else. No, then um, thanks everyone for attending. Um, we now close the broadcasted meeting and we go to the after party. And yeah, for everyone else, we see us again in two weeks. Goodbye, everyone. Good luck.